Hello, I'm Jack Rita. I'm one of the designers at Future Pastimes, and I work on the expansions for the classic Dune board game. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about the Ixian faction from the Ixian and Tulilaxu expansion that came out in 2020. Uh, other videos talk about the Tulilaxu, the tech tokens, and the cards, but this one we're going to talk about the Ixian faction. Um, otherwise, known as House Vernius. House Vernius uh, controlled Ix, uh, but not all the leaders necessarily are House Vernius, but everybody there is just colloquially always known as the Ixians. And the Ixians are the masters of technology in the Dune universe, uh, and they're generally considered the best technology um, house in the Dune universe. They're not the only one. Uh, but that is their reputation. But they also kind of have a reputation for dancing along the lines of what is uh, forbidden by the Great Convention. Um, they had this little thing called the Butlerian Jihad, where the machines rose up and Skynet took over and they battled it out. And after that, there's this whole embargo on AI and uh, machines that can do all the thinking. But the Ixians kind of like... Eh, this one's pretty good. Um, so that's that's kind of uh, their their reputation. Uh, big masters of technology, um, and in the books they're 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 led by Prince Romber, who uh, becomes a cyborg. He survives a horrific incident and uh, has to become part machine. So this concept of cyborgs um, was something that we wanted to leverage in the design of the Ixian faction. Uh, the other uh, side of the equation, though, is that the um, Ixian society have these this worker class called suboids, which are, they're humans, but they're mentally, they're not altogether there. They're basically treated like human robots. Uh, so they're a, uh, a subclass, and um, so we wanted to uh, to leverage that. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the different uh, faction abilities on their faction sheet. Uh, and they talk about at the start of the game, they're going to have um, six forces in something called the Hidden Mobile Stronghold, which I'll talk about here in a moment. And of those six forces, three are going to be cyborg forces, and three are going to be subvoids. So they've got seven cyborgs in the game, and these are their starred tokens, and this little white case is just a plastic extra goodie I got on Etsy. Um, so they have seven cyborgs, and then they have 13 suboids, and those are their 20 forces. And let's talk about them. The cyborgs count as double strength forces, so similar to the Sardaukar and the, the Fadaikin uh, in the base factions. Um, so in basic, these are each going to be worth two in a battle, uh, and in advanced, they're worth one unless you spend the spice to make them full strength at two. The subvoids, on the other hand, they only count as half, uh, and that is uh, in both basic and advanced. So they're half strength units, and so you have to take that into account when you're when you're dialing, and you know you you will have to dial half half a strength uh, in there. And there's a little uh, illustrated example on the card here about how to dial with the subvoids. Um, and that is e even in basic. So the half dialing typically doesn't come into play unless you're playing advanced. But here the Ixians do require you to sometimes dial half if you're going to get into the full strength. So a little bit more about the cyborgs. The cyborgs, double strength, uh, they also have a movement of two territories. So if there are in, if there are any cyborgs in your stack of forces as Ix, uh, then those forces can move two territories. So if, even if there's just one cyborg and you have ten subvoids, they can move two territories. I'm not sure what's going on there. It's like the cyborg is like I'm picking you all up and running through the desert, or whatever that case may be. But those cyborgs are in the stack. They can go two territories. If it's just subvoids by themselves, they can only move one territory. Similarly, the if each cyborg, if you're collecting spice in the collection uh, phase um, from a territory in the desert with spice, uh, the cyborgs, whether you have ornithopters or not, they can each collect three, whereas the subvoids collect two uh, spice normally. It also costs three spice to revive a cyborg. So these guys you want to try to keep out of the tanks as much as you can because they cost a lot more to get out. The free revival rate for the Ixian faction is only one four. So either a cyborg or a suboid, and then you have to pay to get any additional. So you're going to always, always use that free revival to get at least one cyborg out. Now you have no restrictions on how many cyborgs you can revive, which is a difference from the, uh, 
the Fremen and the and the Emperor factions with their star tokens in the advanced game, they can only ever revive one per turn. But there's no limitation here. It just costs a lot more for the for the Ixians to do that. Um, the interesting thing about the Suboids, now they're half strength and you have 13 of them, um, but they have this ability to absorb losses because they're very much like just cannon fodder in there. So let's say that you're in a battle with we have one cyborg and one suboid and you dial two and you're absorbing the losses in there. You've won the battle. So the cyborg is killed and the suboid is left over. But for each suboid that survives a battle, you can send that suboid to the tanks and retain a cyborg that was in the battle and leave that in the territory. So in that example, you've dialed the two. The cyborg is going to absorb the loss, but the suboid has the ability to go to the tanks, and now you keep the cyborg in the territory, and that is a big deal, uh, especially if you've got multiple cyborgs and suboids. So you want to take that into account when you're dialing. You, uh, Unless you have to dial some of those suboids, you want to try to keep a few of them so that they can go to the tanks, and they're cheaper and easier to revive, and then your, your seven double-strength super units can stay behind in the territory. So that's what the cyborgs and the suboids do. Now, some of the other elements have more to do with the concept of technology, since they're masters of technology and they're the ones that are creating all the technology that's going to be brought into the Imperium. Uh, we wanted to realize that, and, and we felt that the treachery deck was the best way to do that. Um, so the way it works is at the start of the game, the Ixian player is actually going to take uh, the top treachery cards, one for each player in the game. So it's a six-player game. They're going to take the top six cards of the treachery deck. They're going to look at them, and they're actually going to choose the one out of that six that they want to be their starting card, which is a huge advantage. And then they're going to be able to see what the other cards are. Now, they do have to shuffle those up and then deal those out to the other players, so they won't know who specifically is getting what. But they will have some card knowledge about the types of things that are out there. So, for instance, if they've drawn the six cards and there's one poison weapon and there's a couple of shields, they might take that poison weapon knowing that nobody has any defense against it. They won't know who has the shields until they start showing up in the battle, but that's a big advantage for them to have. So the Ixians start the game as one of the most powerful factions. It's not necessarily a faction that can stay powerful for very long. So the Ixian faction wants to strike early and hard and try to win the game before things get too out of hand and, and everyone's got cards that can uh, counter their, their abilities. Um, after the first turn, every time there's a, in fact, even in the first turn at the bidding phase, uh, they're going to have a little bit uh, of, of that initial flavor. And what they're going to do is they're going to draw uh, all the cards that are going to be up for auction plus one additional. So if somebody's got a full hand in a six-player game, you'd normally only draw five cards for that bidding phase, but they will draw one extra. So they would look at those six cards and then they would choose one to suppress. So it's something that they're taking out of the production. Uh, it's technology that they are not making available, even if it's a Kulan. Uh, and they're going to put that card either on the top of the treachery deck or at the bottom. And if it's at the bottom, then it's going to be a long time before you see that card, if ever. Uh, if it's on the top, it means that you're going to uh, evaluate that in the next turn's bidding phase. It may also be the card that the Harkonnen get for free, uh, which can be a big deal. You can give them crap uh, unless they're your ally, and then you're feeding them something really useful. Um, so that is important to consider. But the thing, this, what makes it strong is, again, let's say that in our example where they're the only ones with the poison weapon, as uh, another poison weapon or a poison defense comes up out of that batch of cards, they could try to suppress that. Uh, they could also look at a situation where, let's say, they've drawn three worthless cards. They might take the best card out of the mix and suppress it and then know that this is a round where they just don't want to bid on anything because they're more likely to get a worthless card. So they can really control what is going to be uh, up for bid each round and get some knowledge about the types of things that are out there, even if they don't know who exactly has what just yet. So that's that's very powerful. The other main part of their faction advantage has to do with the Hidden Mobile Stronghold. So this is a stronghold that you can occupy uh, for the win. It counts as a regular stronghold like Arakeen or Tuix. And uh, the Ixians start the game in this. And they're going to they're gonna start with three cyborgs and su three suboids in the Hidden Mobile Stronghold. And after the first storm is, is 
dialed, they're going to decide where on the board it's going to start. And the little pointy part here is pointing to the sector and territory where this stronghold is. So they might say, yeah, we're going to start in Haga Basin. This is the sector that we're in. This is the territory that we're in. The forces go right there. And so now they know. And then what happens is on subsequent turns, before the storm is dialed or is going to move, they can move this stronghold. It is a hidden mobile stronghold. Uh, they can move it three territories. And when it moves into or through uh, territories that contain spice, they can collect that spice at a rate of two per force they have in there. So if they have their initial six forces, those forces can collect 12 spice by just moving through that territory with the stronghold. So that can be a big deal, but it's a matter of where you're going to put it. Now, the hidden part of the hidden mobile stronghold, uh, it cannot be shipped into directly by any faction other than the Ixians. So the Ixians, they know where it is. If they're doing a shipment action, they can ship straight to the stronghold. Other factions, even the guild, they would have to ship to the territory that it is in, because this counts as a territory within a territory. So if it were in Haga Basin, they would have to ship to Haga Basin, which is uh, double the normal shipment rate into a stronghold, and then move into that stronghold. Or if they had ornithopters, they might be able to land into a different stronghold and then move into if it were close enough to get to. But it's there are plenty of territories around the uh, edge of the map there that you can... You can safely ensconce the mobile stronghold that makes it hard to get into, or at least it's it's costly to try to ship in force down to that stronghold. So it's a relatively safe, you know, comparatively stronghold for the Ixians to be in control of. Uh, and that's another reason why they are strong at the beginning of the game. They starting with one. They could do, you know, ship into Carthag, move to Arakeen on turn one to try to go for the win with their best card out of the uh, initial cards. So they, the Ixians are uh, a force to be reckoned with. And as far as their advanced advantages, they have two advanced advantages. One of them is something called technology. And the way that works is once during the bidding phase, they before anyone bids in the card, even, for, even before the Atreides can look at the card, they can they can take that card and exchange it for one from their hand, which will then be the card that is put up for auction. So even if the Ixian faction does buy a card that they don't want or a lousy card or whatever, they can unload that card and put it up for bid uh, in, that, in that auction or in the next auction if they want. So that's a powerful way to, for them to optimize their Hand of Treachery cards. And then the other advantage is that their Suboid forces um, always count half strength. They don't need spice to... Uh, to count as half. They won't count as one quarter if you're not spending the spice. They're always half, and you don't have to spend any more to make them half the strength. So that is the Ixian uh, faction. They're a very strong faction. They're, 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 they're fun to play. Moving that, uh, moving that stronghold around is, is a lot of fun. And it's not a giant Roomba that's, you know, hoovering up uh, spice, you know, it's more like a mash unit. That's how I see the hidden mobile stronghold. It's just, you know, it's mobile. They're able to take it apart, move it, put it, put it back together somewhere else. And along the way, they're like, oh, look at all this spice here. Let's grab that along the way. So that's kind of how it works. It's not flying around. It's not on a giant wheels uh, moving. Um, so the, uh, yeah, unless that's how you want to look at it, then fine. You know, <laughs> you do you. Um, but yeah, the stronghold is fun, and having those uh, cyborgs can be a lot of fun. The uh, the leader strength they're very comparable to the to House Atreides. So you've got uh, Kamar Pilru here; he's a one. You got uh, Kaylee Avernius is a two. She's your Duncan Idaho. Dominic Vernius is a is a strength four, and then you have two fives: Sater Pilru and uh, Tessia Vernius from House Vernius. So those are your leaders. So they're pretty decent overall. Um, the cyborgs give them a nice advantage because you've got the seven of them, that's 14 strength plus 13 suboids. So you've got a little bit more, just a tiny bit more strength overall than the other factions if you, if you are able to <laughs> calculate it correctly. And then yes, their treachery card advantage makes them a strong contender. 
Um, how do you fight against the Ixians? You got to go after their stronghold. You got to get in there, fight them out, make them pay. Um, they're going to be tough to get out there because, again, they can they can dial high with those cyborgs and leave a couple of suboids left over in order to replace them. So you do have to worry about that. They're always going to have a slight edge in the uh, treachery card department. So that's a concern, too. They do make a pretty good ally. Their ally advantage is after an ally purchases a treachery card, they may immediately discard it and draw the top card of the deck. And so you may notice that feeds right into the starting bidding advantage where they can put uh, a really good card right there on the top of the deck for their ally. And they can say, look, buy whatever. And if, if you get a card and it's not something that you want, you can discard it and get that card that we, uh, we already talked about. So um, the Ixians, they're, they're a strong faction. They're good. They're fun to play. They're tough to beat. Um, you just got to stop them, try to do some stronghold blocking on turn one, keep them from getting in to three or more strongholds uh, right off of the get-go. Uh, and then, um, yeah, just wait them out. That's that's the key to beating the Ixian. So let me know what you think of the Ixian faction and this expansion overall, and uh, what else you want to see videos on uh, in the Dune uh, universe uh, in, in terms of games that we've worked on and uh, any of our other games. So uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.